trigonometry, sine and cosine ratio. So first I'm going to start with a, just a little review from yesterday's lesson where I talked about how do you uh, label the sides of a triangle so that you can properly determine which trig ratio you should be using. So that's what we're going to do first. So I'm going to label this angle right here theta and with a different color I'm going to label this other line angle over here alpha. Now remember when you're labeling the sides that the sides have to be labeled according to the angle that you're at. So if I'm at angle alpha here, we know that the hypotenuse is always a hypotenuse, so I'm going to label that one H. And if I'm using this angle, then this side is going to say, aha, so this is my adjacent side and this is my opposite side. You have to remember though that if you're on the other angle down here at theta, the hypotenuse is always the same, so we still have the hypotenuse here, but this angle, this side length here would be adjacent and this would be my opposite. So again, just be careful, make sure that you've labeled your sides appropriately for each triangle that you might be dealing with. Okay, so with the sine and cosine ratios, the first thing we want to do is make sure that you've got your calculator working properly. And by working properly, you need to make sure, and this happens a lot with my students, especially on tests, where they start doing um, a calculation and they find out that their calculator isn't in degrees. So if you have a fancy calculator like this one, you'll see degrees is highlighted here, so mine is in degrees. There is another way to measure angles, radians, and you'll use those in grade 12. So make sure you're in degrees. If you have a more basic scientific calculator, it should say across the top, deg, rad, something like that across the top, and you'll be able to change that by clicking on a special button. They're all different, so I can't really tell you exactly how to do it, but um, try to figure it out. Go to your manual if you need to. Okay, so the first thing you need to know how to do is just how to find the, um, the measurement. So if I've been given a ratio, so I say the sine of theta equals this, this is me telling you that the opposite side to the hypotenuse would be in the ratio of 0 0.712. So if I want to know what the angle is, then I have to do that shift on the calculator. So look right above sine where it says sine negative 1. I'm going to do second sine negative 1 and plug in 0 0.712. And that's going to give me the angle in degrees. So this is approximately 45.4 degrees. Make sure you put your degree symbol on and make sure you give the answer to the appropriate number of decimals that you've been asked for. If, however, I wanted to know what is the sine of 60, this is asking you, what is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse when I have an angle of 60 degrees? So your calculator again has that rate in it. All you have to do is hit sine of 60 and it gives you the ratio. So it's approximately 0.87. Okay, so now that we've got that on, out of the way, we did. Um, I did want to mention again what the three primary trigonometric ratios are. And remember that if you say sine, you have to give an angle. So you just don't say sine equals, it's sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. The cos of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is your Sokotor rule. And the tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. So remember um, that those are the primary trig ratios and they only work when you have a right angled triangle. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for the next couple of lessons. Okay, so let's do another example where you're finding an angle. So let's say I asked you to find um, angle R. So let's say find angle R. So if I want to know what this angle is here, I'm going to call 
I'll put a theta in here. So R is going to be angle R, remember, is in in the the vertex or, or in here. This is R. And remember when you're labeling triangles, um, angles and sides, that the side is always labeled with a lowercase letter opposite the angle. So if this is angle T, this is side T. This is angle S, this would be side S. Okay. I'm not talking about in terms of opposite or adjacent, but just how they relate to the angles. So if I'm asked to find angle R, that's this one here that's encompassed between these two sides. Okay, so what you want to do, and every time you're doing a trig question, you're going to label the sides. So if this is angle R, and that's the angle that I'm trying to solve for, I would say, well, what side is this? What side is this in terms of adjacent, opposite, or hypotenuse? So I know this one is hypotenuse. And if I put my finger here on the angle R, I would know that side S is the adjacent side and this side is the opposite side. So the sides that I'm working with, though, I'm not working with side S here or the adjacent side. I I have these two. So I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse. So you say I have, and I, you don't write all this out, I'm just writing this for you, but you say I have O and H. So which trig ratio should I use? What trig ratio uses these two sides? And you should, well if you're still in this stage where you need to look up and see what O and H belong to, but you should note that it's so, this one was ka, remember we did this yesterday as well, so ka toa. So if you, um, if you haven't watched that first lesson, go to the playlist and look for grade 10 trig and that will be your first lesson. Okay, so I have O and H, what trig ratio uses O and H? And you would say sine the sine ratio. Okay, so I'm going to start my question by saying the sine of, you can either write R or theta, I've labeled it theta, so I'm gonna say theta. The sine of theta equals, now I have opposite over hypotenuse, so all I have to do is write eight over 17. Now you can see that this is the ratio, eight to 17, opposite to hypotenuse. If I want to find the angle now, remember I have the ratio, I want the angle. It's just like when I gave you this ratio way up here as a decimal. So I could do 8 divided by 17 on my calculator and say the ratio is 0 0.470588253. Now you're not going to write that out because um, you'll lose some accuracy by rounding here. So I'm just going to put in, I want to go from ratio to angle. So that means I need second sign of eight divided by 17. Okay, so I'm just plugging my ratio here, eight to 17, right in. Don't, uh, you know, don't find this and then round it. Um, just plug it all in and I'll hit enter and I get approximately 28.1 degree. I'm going to round up because the second decimal is greater than five. So I'm going to say theta is approximately equal to 28.1 degrees. Don't forget your degree sign. Okay, so that's how you find an angle, finding an angle. And these, of course, were um, sine ratios. Okay, so let's find the side length now. Now, if I have this side length here, which side do would I use if I wanted to use the sine of theta? So remember the sine of theta now is so. So I want opposite and hypotenuse. So for this angle here, side B here, which is opposite my angle, this is the opposite side, right? This is opposite. So I'm gonna put an O there. And this would be the hypotenuse. So if I wanted to use the sine of 60, I would be finding the length of 
side C. Remember C across from it. So this is side C. This is side A. Okay, make sure you've got that straight because that can add up to some trouble for you if you don't. Okay, so I can write now that the sine of 60 degrees, remember this is going to be a ratio right out of your calculator, is going to be equal to the opposite, so 3.6 over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to be solving for the hypotenuse here. So we're going to be finding side, um, side C. Okay, so sine 60 is 3.6 over H. How do I solve for H now? So the other day I showed you a little trick. It's not a trick, it's just an easy way to find um, one of the sides or one of the parts of a ratio. So if I want to find H now, I say H is equal to, and I go up, down, up. So I can only go up from here, so it's 3.6 times 1 divided by the sine of 60. So that gives you a one-step calculation. So h equals 3.6 times 1 divided by the sine of 60 degrees. And I'm going to write approximately equal to, because it's going to be a decimal. So I do 3.6 divided by sine 60 equals and I get 4.15 so this was only one decimal so I'm going to give this answer also in one decimal so I'm going to round that up to 4.2 so approximately 4.2 and because it's in um, it has units I would say therefore the um, side H is approximately, don't be shy to write out some nice concluding statements, 4.2 meters. Okay, so that was using sine. There's finding an angle and finding a side length. Now let's move on and we'll do one for the cosine and then we're going to do a couple of word problems. Okay, so back to the same kind of work with the calculator. I want to know what is the sine of 20 degrees. Now remember, I'm uh, sorry, the cos. If I say cos of 20 degrees, what this calculator is going to give you is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse. Bam, 0.9396. Usually they would ask for these for at least three decimals. Um, now remember, you're going to leave that in your calculator and um, have a nice, approximately there, a nice um, accurate answer as accurate as possible. And if I have the ratio and I want the angle, remember I'm going to do cos negative 1 of 0 0.988 is equal to theta. And so I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to do second. Remember, the second function brings up everything in blue here on my calculator. Um, and I have 0.988, and that gives me 8.8. .8. Uh, we're finding an angle, so I would write 8.9 degrees. Okay, so that's a little warm up to get your calculator working. And it says, which angle would I be solving for if I wanted to use the cosine ratio. Okay, so for the cosine ratio, the cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So for which of these angles, E or D, obviously not A because A is the right angle, which one uh, have I given you the adjacent side for? So if we were at this angle here, angle D, and I put my finger there, this is my hypotenuse again, and this is going to be the adjacent side, right? Because it says, aha. Okay, so which angle would I be solving for? You'd be solving for angle D. So I can say the cos of D is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 12 over 20 
And if I want to know the angle now, remember, I have a ratio. Your calculator does two things, but to go from ratio to angle, I need cos negative 1. So I'm going to write cos negative 1 of 12 over 20 is equal to, and I'm going to write it as angle D here this time. So now you get out your calculator again, second cosine 12 divided by 20 equals, and I get approximately 53.1 degrees. Okay, so this is not hard, right? 53.1 degrees. Always remember to use nice format anytime you're doing any math. Okay, now find a side length. This angle here says 47 degrees, if it's not really clear. And again, I would put my finger here. So put my finger on this angle. And this is the hypotenuse. Label your sides. This is the adjacent side. So A and H is ka, right? C-A-H. So ka toa. So I'm going to use cosine, the cosine ratio. Okay, so here we go. We're going to say the cos of 47 degrees is equal to the adjacent, make sure you put it on the top here, over the hypotenuse, which is 12. And to find x, x will be 12 times the cos of 47 degrees divided by 1. There's your little n pattern that I show in the last lesson as well. So x is equal to 12 times the cos of 47 degrees. And remember the cos of 47 degrees, all I, I get that right off the calculator. Cos 47 times 12 is giving me 8.18 or 8.2. So x is approximately equal to 8.2. Therefore, x is approximately 8.2 and it was centimeters. Okay, moving right along here, we have two little word problems. Um, one uses sine, one uses cosine, because that's what we're doing today. But when you have a test, obviously they're going to be all mixed up. And it says, a tree is splintered by lightning, and the top of the tree makes a 70-degree angle with the ground. How tall was the tree if the break was two meters off the ground? So always draw yourself a little picture. I'll draw it right here. So we had a tree that got broken right here, and this part fell down onto the ground here, and it made a 70-degree angle with the ground. This was two meters. The splintered was two meters. The break was two meters off the ground. And you want to know how tall was the tree. So I want to know how tall this piece is because I'm going to put that back up here to tell you how tall the tree was before the break. Okay, so I'm going to label my sides. So here's my angle, 70. Angle is here. This is the Opposite side, yes, O, and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. So O and H means so, S-O-H, so that's sine. So I'm going to say the sine of the angle, 70 degrees, equals the opposite, which was 2, over the hypotenuse, which is going to be, well, we'll just call it H here. So again, H is going to be 2 times 1 divided by the sine of 70. H equals 2 times 1 over the sine of 70 degrees. And so that's just, let's clear that. 2 divided by the sine of 70 degrees equals 2.12. Um, did it give didn't say what you, how many decimals. So let's just do, um, let's do two decimals. So that would be, if I round this, it's going to be 2.13 because the eight is bigger than five. So I'm gonna say approximately equal to 2.13. So how high was the tree? So therefore the tree 
was approximately, I always say approximately, so I'm going to do 2 plus 2.13, so that's 4.13 meters. It was so sad. Poor tree. Tree. The last problem says a kite string is 35 meters long and makes an angle of 50 degrees with the ground. How far from the person holding the string is a person standing directly under the kite? So again, you want to make yourself a picture. Now kite string, let's say I'm standing here and I'm holding the kite string and it goes out 35 meters and it makes an angle of 50 degrees with the ground. Well, we're just going to assume that this is right on the ground. We're going to do another problem soon where you add in the height, but for now it just says it's 50 degrees with the ground and your kite is out here and there's another person standing directly underneath the kite and what you want to know is how far apart are you here? So this is what you're trying to solve for here, this distance between you and your friend. So I put my finger on the angle here. Let's get a nice color. So there's my finger. And this is the hypotenuse. I have orange nail polish on this time. And this side, it's right beside it. So that's your aha moment here. So this is your adjacent. So I'm finding the adjacent. I have the hypotenuse and I have the angle. So ah, which trig ratio has the ah part to it? And you should be saying ah, ka, cosine. So the cosine of 50 degrees is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which is what we're trying to solve for over the hypotenuse, which is 35 meters. So this one, you can put it over one, or maybe you can see these are easy enough that you just multiply both sides by 35. But it's good to get in the practice of using this little end thing for the ones where the ratios are on the bottom and you're more apt to make a mistake. So x is 35 times the cos of 50 divided by one, or x equals 35 cos. 50 goes 50 degrees. So now you bring in your calculator, and you turn it on, you make sure you're in degrees, and you do 35 times the cos of 50, and I get about 22 and a half. So x is approximately equal to 22.5. Therefore, the person or the people, let's say the people are approximately 22.5 meters apart. And there you go. There's a cute little lesson on sine and cosine. Uh, the next lesson I'll do some more, um, more difficult word problems and before we head into lessons with acute triangles. So if you haven't subscribed and you're watching the channel, it's nice to support free math by subscribing. I encourage you to do so. Leave comments, any questions. I'm pretty good at answering them within 24 hours. All the best.